Welcome everyone to Journey of Riches, the interview series with the authors from book number 11, Finding Inspiration, 11 stories that will inspire your soul. And I'm here with Wendy Jarvis and she was born in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, where she lived, but she lived most of her life in Spartanburg, South Carolina. She's energetic. Funny, high-spirited, and a gifted entrepreneur that truly has a heart for service. Wendy is a former paralegal who was burnt out and overbroke, but knew there had to be a better way than working for someone else, doing 90% of the work and getting 10% of the pay. Wendy has always had an entrepreneurial spirit and always thinking of new and creative ways to bring an extra income to be her own boss and become financially independent when she happened upon network marketing. Wendy is an avid reader and she has always had a passion for writing. She writes mostly for herself and to inspire others. Her greatest desire is to write a best-selling novel, Go Girl. Wendy has six children and enjoys traveling and spending time with friends and family. It's so great to be talking to you today, Wendy. Thanks, John. Fantastic. And there was just so much I learned about you in your chapter that I didn't realize. And we'd met last year in South Carolina at Casey Pluff's You Can Have It All retreat. And I just didn't realize that you had so many children for one, you have six, and that you just have this massive caring capacity for special needs children. And you foster, you look after special needs, take them in. (laughs) Extraordinary! <laughs> wow, and you've had uh, Tyler. I, you met, you mentioned all the di- the different names, and I remember um, Tyler as being the uh, was it the he's like a cheek the cheeky one, like and he's just so larger than life, and yeah, has, has it, loves that, mm, And he has Down syndrome. He does. He's uh-huh. thirteen. He's our youngest. Uh-huh. He has Downs, and we got him when he was about two months old. Wow. Wow. So you had to bottle feed him? Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Extraordinary. And one of your chapters just filled with little nuggets of uh, surprises. And it was, it was fascinating. I was just really blown away. I was like, wow. I remember you thinking like, I don't think, you know, you, you, you didn't think your chapter was very good that I'm reading. I'm like, wow, this is, I knew it was good before and then you added some pieces to it and uh, it's it's even better, which was kind of hard to imagine. It's really, really good. I was, it's a page turner. I mean, every story is in this book and all, most of the books actually, especially this one. And um, wow. I I mean, let's, should we do the reveal? Should we share it or should we wait for people to read about it? Um, Maybe. Share. Okay. Oh. I'm a nugget. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I mean, we could share one of the stories and um, about uh, you were working for a, a law firm. Yes. And you had a special relationship uh, with one of the clients. Do you want to tell, tell us about that? Uh, she was, uh, I can't remember um, why she was there. And of course I can't mention names or anything like that for confidentiality reasons, but she and I kind of connected. Um, Mm -hmm. She had small children. I had small children. She would often bring the kids into the law office when she would meet with the attorney. And of course I got stuck babysitting, which was not stuck at all because I love kids. Like I wanted eight kids. (laughs) I ended up having like 28. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um you know one one day she just needed a babysitter for the weekend and I volunteered and you know because I had kids about the same age and mm-hmm. so she brought them that Friday afternoon and about the time I was getting off work and she was supposed to come pick them up Sunday and she never showed <laughs> she um apparently decided to run off to Mexico with some man and never came back. So I ended up with these two sweet little girls for a while. Like I know it was getting close to Christmas and, you know, we were buying Christmas presents for them as well as our kids. And 
it was it was quite interesting um, how that all transpired and you know I kind of got in a little bit of trouble because <laughs> I didn't tell the attorney that I worked for that I had these kids that weren't mine <laughs> and you know I was frantically trying to find her and I couldn't find her um, I did uh, we did end up finding one of the girls dads and um, he took her but the other girl ended up getting put up for adoption and was adopted and I lost track of her the 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 couple that adopted her wanted a private adoption um, but it was it was really one of the pivotal moments in my life I think that got me interested in becoming a foster parent and um, I knew I just I had so much love to give for children and I knew that you know coming from you know not a great childhood all the time personally um, you know I wanted to make a difference I wanted to give children who didn't have a loving family mother father grandparents uncles whoever taking care of them you know to have somebody that they could depend on because it's not about you know the finances it's not about you know what kind of house you live in you know what you can provide it's all about love everything is about love God is love everything is love and if we could just all um, encapsulate that into our lives every single day it would be a much better world <laughs> I love that and uh, it's such a fascinating story of how you got started uh, with fostering because you have uh, your own children as well mm -hmm. you have is it three of your own that are okay three biological children yes. um Brittany um yeah. she's 30 mm -hmm. and Ray's 28 and Margaret's 20 okay and so then we started fostering I think Margaret was about a year old and we have had some doozies. <laughs> some challenging, <laughs> challenging. Some challenging children. <laughs> but, um, you know, every, I, I consider every child that was brought into our life a, a blessing. Um, a lot of them were lessons. <laughs> Something that, you know, God knew I needed. Um, I've had many people tell me what patience I have and being a foster parent definitely taught me patience um and i do have a lot of patience but i think that just you know i don't know it was just something about just being a foster parent that that i just wanted to do and then when i heard from a friend of mine actually a friend of my mom's that there were there was a greater need to be a special needs foster parent that was that was definitely something that uh Mike and I wanted to explore and we did and we fostered for 17 years before we um, had to get out because of medical issues um, for Mike and um, you know that was just like three years ago so it's it was a journey and we had some amazing children I'm, I still keep in touch with a lot of children that aged out of the system because once they leave your home you're not technically allowed to you know keep in contact with them mm -hmm. but a lot of them have friended me friended me on Facebook and when we stay in touch and one of my fosters is actually pregnant with her own child now and so it's just exciting to kind of follow them through their own lives um, to see you know that you did make a difference in their life uh, that's fantastic just your um level of care and your capacity to love is just extraordinary it really shines through in your chapter and just some of the stories i just had no idea that um yeah it was just a real surprise for me to read that and, I was, and, a, and a nice surprise as well i was like wow i just didn't the level of just really touched by the level of your capacity to um to love and care for for these children and to um love them as your own Thank you. Uh, it was just really very inspiring. So, and so that's that. That really comes across. That that's how you find your inspiration is is through children and through service and helping others. And, uh, Absolutely. I find that you know in a world with social media and I think a lot of people are wanting fame and notoriety. 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 No, I'm trying. Let me see if I can get it. 
<laughs> notoriety. <laughs> and, so yeah, like fame. <laughs> I swallowed that word. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> but, and rather than actually uh, focusing on service, you know, and I, your chapter really epitomizes that is the the sense of service and um, giving to others. But also, one of the questions I had is how do you then make sure that your own needs are met? <laughs> I think <laughs> that is something that I'm yeah. newly stepping into <laughs> yeah. because, um, you know, some things have happened in my life, some, some challenges and some personal things that have gone on in the last year. And definitely I think that, you know, I went from being a daughter to a wife, to a mother, and I've always, you know, a foster mother, I've always had these hats of taking care of so many people, whether it was, you know, relatives that were, you know, sick and, you know, I'd move in and take care of them or, you know, kids or foster kids, my husband, whatever. Um, for so long, I, I never thought about my own personal needs until recently. And now I am realizing that I, I got kind of lost mm -hmm. in, in taking care of so many other people. Um, what made me happy, what made me click. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I spend a lot of time in personal growth. I spend a lot of time meditating, um, just kind of, like I said in, in the chapter, kind of watching mm -hmm. what I think and what I say and what I talk about and what I allow into mm -hmm. my mind because yeah. it so easily can come into your physical reality mm -hmm. when you are um, concentrating or thinking too much negatively. Mm -hmm. So I, I just you know, I read a lot. Um, and I just spend a lot of alone time. I love to hike. I love to get out in nature and just spend time with just me. <laughs> and, and I always considered that kind of selfish until recently. And I realized no one else is going to take care of me yeah. if I don't take care of me and no one else, you know, it's hard you know, you you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself enough to realize that you have to come first because you can't take care of you. I mean, you can't take care of someone else if you're not taking care of you. Mm -hmm. So I think just a lot of um, self-reflection, meditating, mm -hmm. just kind of getting in nature, getting back in tune with spirit, my spirituality, with God and, and who I really am as a person where I want to go, who, and, and who I want in, in my inner circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I like, and wow, what a journey has been to get to that point. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a journey. <laughs> of course. Good and bad. <laughs> and what's uh, something that people don't know about you? Something people don't know about me. Hmm. I'm pretty private, so there's a lot of people. <laughs> <don't know. laughs> well, I was thinking, what about the Facebook group that you just started? Oh, yes, I just started a women's only Facebook group. Yep. Um, I just felt that there was a need mm -hmm. for women to be able, not everyone has an amazing tribe of women surrounding them like I do. I'm very blessed. I have more friends than I have money. I mean, it's ridiculous how many great girlfriends that I have that I can call at any time, day or night, and they would be there just like that. I mean, literally like hundreds of friends that I consider really good friends of mine. But, you know, in talking to people on Facebook, because that's, you know, in network marketing, I'm usually on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn, prospecting, talking to people, getting to know people. 
oh. um, sharing my story, realizing that not a lot of women have that tribe of, of other women that they can bounce ideas off of, talk to about personal issues. And so Katie and I were at her house this weekend or this, I think last week sometime, I can't remember, cleaning out her closet. And I'm like, I'm going to start a women's only Facebook group. And she was like, why? I said, and I told her, I was like, because, you know, we need, we need a tribe and we need to support women who don't have that tribe and give them somewhere safe. That was, that was my, my big thing was I wanted it to be safe in a no judgment zone. So literally we can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have a couple of guys that are a little jealous of our group and trying oh, to get yeah. in, <laughs> but that won't happen. <laughs> But it, it's it's a great group. I mean, it's so interactive. The women are loving it. They're um, they're really interacting with each other. They're they're making new friends. I mean, I just literally started it, and it's got over two hundred people in it already. Two hundred women, wow. and it's like my phone is blowing up with the dings. I had to mute it just now because they're just commenting and and really getting you know, some of these issues and, you know, sometimes women just want to vent. And so it's a safe judgment free zone where people where women can just go in and, and talk about dating or marriage or divorce, separation, children, sex, love, everything, you know, what works, what doesn't, you know, um, dating apps apparently is a hot topic right now. <laughs> Although there might not be many boys in the group, you're all talking about boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're ta definitely talking about the boys. <laughs> Hence why no boys will be allowed in our group. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a couple yeah. try to get in. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, good luck to them. <laughs> right? Nothing's going to get past you, I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm definitely the, the police when it comes to that group because I don't really want to, because the content is, yeah. it's probably a little rated R <laughs> and I don't need to be in Facebook jail. <laughs> so I don't want to get reported. <laughs> that's, so that's great. I think it's a great initiative that you can um, create a safe space for women to go and, and be themselves and without judgment. and um, yeah, share about things that they can't ordinarily share about in an open, okay. open, closed forum. So I think it's fantastic. Thanks. And there's certain things that only really a woman can understand from another woman. And, exactly. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's awesome. What a great idea, great initiative. And Thank so you. people, if people watching this interview want to actually go to the group, uh, where do they go? So women, women that want to go to the group. Um, I can't tell you the name of the group because okay. it's Ray War. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> but they can, <laughs> they can message me, Wendy Michelle Hall Jarvis on Facebook. Okay. okay. So Wendy Michelle Hall is in H N O L Jarvis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yes. They can message me or, or friend, send me a friend request and message me and I'll add them to the group. Okay. <laughs> All right. Exciting. It's a great initiative. And I'm sure there's a lot, lot, a lot of other women out there that would like to um, join such a group. So, yeah. Awesome. And so what do you hope people get from your chapter? Well, I hope they get inspired. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be a good start. <laughs> I sure oh. will. From just your, your caring, your sense of service and caring capacity is awesome. Well, I think that, you know, a lot of people don't realize they can inspire themselves mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that they can raise their own vibration, their own energy, um, just by the power of their own mind. Yeah. And so I, I would hope that people could read my chapter. Um, and I know that you and I had talked before, um, about the book rock bottom and, mm -hmm. you know, my reasons for not contributing to that book. Yeah, you were meant to be in that book. That was just the one before this one. I know. Sorry. And then you did the last minute change. And actually, you inspired um, because we you you tweaked your chapter for this book actually, um, 
and it's a lot about love and gratitude and inspired the, not the next one, but the one after the next one, book 13, you inspired book 13, embracing love and gratitude, uh, which is, uh, is completely full. So there's no places left and um, people are writing um, for that book. So wow. yeah, just really extraordinary. So thank you. You inspired that idea. Um, yeah, with, with your chapter and going back and forth. We've been working together on your chapter now for a good while. I know, a couple months. Sorry about that. <laughs> and, uh, a few months. Um, I remember <laughs> meeting earlier this year and um, having a conversation and we just discovered the on the mobile phone the different hats you can wear on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> yes. You're doing the wizard thing and then you had a moustache at one point. I think I had a lady's hat on. And, Yes, I actually didn't. I have something coming out of my eyes at one point. I'm not sure. I think you did. Yes, lightning bolts or something. Yes, but you know there were some very deep personal reasons why I couldn't mm -hmm. contribute to that book because mm -hmm. you know I was kind of in the middle of rock bottom. Yes. Um, but to be able to inspire yourself to pick yourself up from rock bottom or from a just a negative vibrational energy space to a place of enlightenment of, of, um, of happiness of, um, just being able to make that shift mm -hmm. because that was, I mean, that was, you know, it, yeah, we've been working on it for a couple of months, but to be able to go from where I was to where I am now and the things that I learned, not just about life, but about myself. I mean, I've learned so much about myself in the last three months that I would have never known had I not been in rock bottom. Mm. <laughs> so I, I want people to read my chapter and, and know that they can inspire themselves. They, there, there's no having to depend on or rely on someone else. You know, I hear this all the time, like with couples or, you know, with, uh, you know, a man and a wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, he completes me. We're all 100% completed when we're born, when we're, you know, just when we're here, we don't need another human to complete us. All the happiness that, that we can have is all found within. And when we truly find that, and I'm truly just now finding my own inner peace and happiness mm -hmm. and not having to depend on anyone else for that. I think that's what I want my chapter to help people realize is mm -hmm. you don't have to depend on someone else for your own happiness. It's all within and just the other people that come into your physical reality, just enhance the happiness that you already have inside. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Enhance. And I think that that was one of the things, what I saw from an outside uh, perspective, uh, looking at your life on Facebook anyways, that you were always posting photos with Katie and <laughs> of course, Katie was in our book nine, Transformation Calling, and uh, she was at your house or you were at her house when we did the interview. And we're always together. <laughs> you guys are always together. So. <laughs> we are. And I noticed that really helped, helped you. And, um, it did. It did. Because she had, she had gone through a similar situation and, um, you know, she was, she was able to kind of help guide me through and give me some books to read and some, you know, uh, listening to Esther Hicks, Abraham, um, you know, helping me realize how I can stay in that high vibrational state of, mm -hmm. you know, how to raise my energy, staying in the vortex and understanding, you know, what the vortex was and that, and, and how to pull it into our physical reality. It, it really was a life changing relationship. I mean, Katie and I have been friends for five years um, or more, but just here in the last probably six months, we've gotten super duper close and mm. she's helped me tremendously. I love her to pieces. Yeah, that's awesome. And of course you celebrated your birthdays together in Vegas. And yes. 
she celebrated. I stayed in the bed sick the whole time. So oh. we have, we're going back either in July or August. I'm not sure which one, but oh, okay. we're going back in the next couple of weeks because, <laughs> because I did not enjoy Vegas. <laughs> oh, I literally wow. stayed in the bed the whole oh, time. Oh, really? Oh. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so, well, of course, uh, so you have to go back and, and make sure that you um, party it up. But you're more of a nature person, aren't you? I think Katie's more of the party, likes to go out and party. Katie is definitely the partier. I, my, my biggest thing was I love going to Red Rock Canyon. Mm -hmm. I love going out there and hiking. And yep. um, I've been to um, the Hoover Dam. I've been to um, the Grand Canyon several times. I love just going out there and getting in nature. I mean, it's just some of the, I mean, Utah, oh my gosh. Amazing. Going out to Utah, they have some of the most gorgeous hiking trails I've ever. That's where I really would love to go. Georgia um, are incredible. Yes, and it's just like a little two-hour drive from Vegas. Yeah, it's only yeah, an hour. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was there last year. Amazing. I went to Lenny's. Uh, I, I started saying I'm going to have to hit Lenny up and tell him I'm coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. His retreat <laughs> awesome. Bliss retreat. Follow yes, I group. love his retreats. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, fantastic. Well, it's been awesome chatting with you, Wendy. We could just keep talking and talking. We uh, could. <laughs> I just, yeah, just love where you're at and um, where you've been and even the roller coaster ride that you, that you found yourself on earlier in the year and, just how you just keep keep on keeping on. It's fantastic. It's inspiring to see, and people are going to get so much from your chapter, and just learn. Uh, just oh, there's just so much to learn from your experiences. I really appreciate your sharing, and I learn a lot from just the level of your capacity, your loving capacity, is extraordinary. And of course, uh, we're launching this book on the 28th of June, which is very exciting. It'll be available for just 99 cents um, for five days and all the proceeds will go to the Bali Street Kids Project um, here in Denbasar and it's fantastic what they do. Is, you know, they take kids off the street and, and um, give them homes and adopt them and give them education and it's just extraordinary. And so it's uh, a great place to visit too. If you're ever in Bali, I'll, I'll have to take you there. Oh, I would love that. I sort of say that's very near and dear to my heart, that, that, yeah. that charity. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew it would resonate with you after reading your chapter. It's uh, <laughs> amazing. And they have special needs children as well and children that have been like really disfigured through burns, uh, just you know, accidental burns and, um, but just not being wanted and I just give them a loving, loving home. And they've had, they've been there for, Oh, probably more than 20 years now. And the woman that runs it is just a, a dear soul for two and, and just do amazing things. So, uh, I can see you now. I'm over to Bali and go to this place and I'm going to come back to the United States with like 15 kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to hire your own plane. I mean, <laughs> right? all back. Yeah. You would just <laughs> love it there. And the kids are just so adorable. I just amazing. Yeah, just That's really awesome. gorgeous. So, thank you so much, Wendy, and uh, really looking forward to um, people reading your your chapter and, of course, the book that we're, both, that we're both in. So, yes, thank you so much, Tom. Of course, for people watching this, if you'd like to get more interviews, like the one with Wendy, uh, is um, just subscribe down below and hit the bell notification, and you'll get notified when we do more of these interviews. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Tom.